Maybe I can fix the motor. You can't fix a sandwich. How's it going guys? It's your boy Round Tall Guy. Welcome back to the channel. On today's video in the garage, I'm gonna work on the 2008 Jeep Commander. And uh, today I decided to do a how-to video on how to replace the full front suspension. So this is gonna include the upper control arm, the lower control arm, the strut. Um, and I I'm also gonna be replacing uh, the bushings on the front axles just because on these vehicles they tend to go bad and mine's already banging back and forth when I go from drive to park. So in this video, I'm gonna cover all that. And hopefully this is could be helpful for somebody uh, doing the same project all right so let's get started all right guys the first thing i did i blocked off the rear wheel so it doesn't roll i went ahead and jacked it up i put uh, jack stands on the pinch wheel and the body because i don't trust the pinch wheels um and i went ahead and removed both tires all right guys the first thing first we're going to do we're going to disconnect the battery so we don't short circuit anything you're going to need a, you're going to need a 10 millimeter for that uh, then you're going to have bolts here. Um, you have a nut here, a nut here, and then one hidden in here. Also 10 millimeters. So in order to access that, you need to remove this whole box. It's pretty simple. There's uh, one, two, three, four tabs here that has like this little release tab. You need to press on it and you should be able to lift this out of the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that to both sides. This one, same thing. Just this one tab here. Um, and I believe one, one here, one here. That same thing. You move it out of the way and you should be able to lift it off put it to the side and then we can move this plastic bracket that is hiding. There was one, two, three, 10 millimeter nuts you have to remove. And of course, these are the three ears that holds this fuse box. And then there's these two, these three, one, two, three, that holds the uh, smaller one. I just have to be careful with the plastic because I, I managed to snap one of the ears off. So be careful with it and it should come right off. And uh, also there's about three wires you need to just unmount from this bracket there's these, uh, this one right here then there's this thin one in here which goes right here and then there was another one but I can't remember anymore but just make sure nothing is snagged up when you remove the bracket so you don't pull any wires too aggressively and now we have the four bolts here that we need to um, unscrew and that should uh, that should be all for the top part and then we can start working on the bottom I'm gonna unbolt the four nuts here. This is gonna be 18 millimeter. You just wanna go ahead and take your time, and I recommend just going the crisscross pattern as you're loosening it, so you don't like warp the the uh, steel mounds or anything. Just take your time because it's a lot of pressure uh, being pulled down. So so you wanna make sure you you um, play safe and just do this nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four, and I'll get right back to you. All right, guys. So now I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this nut here, which should let this uh, this pinman arm or this uh, steering knuckle pour forward. And when what that's gonna allow is gonna allow this front um, this, this front control arm to go up, which will give me room to pull this out when the time comes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this up. All right, and this is a 18 millimeter as well. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen that. All right, so I got the 18 millimeter uh, nut out. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this part right here with a hammer. That should break the bond between this ball joint and this knuckle free. And this should drop a little bit. All right guys, next I'm gonna go ahead and just loosen the uh, ABS cable. I'm gonna take it out of the way so I don't damage it or stretch it because that'd be a pain and expensive mistake if I allow it to break. All right guys, so I went ahead and disconnected the ABS uh, cable completely because I'm gonna remove the knuckle out of the way uh, because as I mentioned, I'm gonna also replace the lower control arm. That being said, I need to, I need to take off the tie rod. I'm gonna replace the tie rod, um, but before I do that, I went ahead and put the nut back in because I need this to be solid so I can break this nut free. Um, so then I can remove the nut down here pop this out of the way and when it comes uh, time to replace it I can just unscrew it easily just because this thing is probably like rusted shut uh, good here now in case you guys are wondering this right here was a 18 millimeter this nut right here on the um, outer tie rod is gonna be a uh, 15 16 and should fit snugly on it uh, the nut uh, for, for the nut that connects the outer tie rod to the knuckle it's gonna be a 21 millimeter um, also, we need to remove the sway bar end links. That's going to be an 18 millimeter on both sides. I also went ahead and I moved the 
caliper out of the way and in case you guys are wondering those are 13 millimeters just two bolts take them right off you, you can actually leave the mounting bracket on the knuckle that's fine so that's basically where we're at also we needed to remove the nut for the axle the cv axle in case you guys are wondering this is a 36 a millimeter i recommend get the get the uh six point i have the 12 point it did work but you're kind of risking it so get yourself a uh six point socket for that once again that's a 36 millimeter for that all right so basically what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and uh break this free take off this nut move the tie rod out of the way then i'm gonna work with the uh the uh, nut that's down here that holds the lower control arm to the knuckle i need to break that free and then finally once everything is free i'm going to go ahead and remove this and i should be able to pull the knuckle out of the way the um axles are going to stay within the differential uh just because there's no way to remove it yet because um is in between this um this mount for the strut if you guys can take a look so that's basically where we're at so basically uh i'm gonna go ahead uh, I'm gonna go ahead and break this free, move this out of the way. I'm gonna remove the sway bar end links. I'm gonna break the nut down here free for the lower control arm. And then I'm gonna move this out of the way. Once I, once I finish that, I'm gonna get back to you so we can uh, move on with the next steps. Right, guys so i was able to remove the whole knuckle i went ahead and loosen uh the lower uh ball joint uh nut and then and i went ahead and hit it with a sledgehammer and it came out perfectly fine i tapped the um the axle a little bit just to break the little rust so this can push in so that the uh, knuckle itself could push out and then i went ahead and loosened the final nut up here and it came out one piece take a look at it it's pretty simple i recommend doing that if you're gonna replace the uh, control arms and everything um honestly if, you, if you're just replacing the strut you don't have to do that but i'm replacing everything and the reason why if you take a look this strut is garbage this thing right here was bouncing this washer here or this cover kept bouncing up and down causing this thing to rattle so i went ahead and put this foam here for the meantime another thing is the reason why i'm replacing the lower control arm the bushings are shot the ball joint has a lot of play uh, same thing with the top one so that's the reason why I'm gonna replace it and the outer tie rod because it's rusty and ugly, so I'm gonna replace that. Um, also, as I mentioned, I'm also gonna replace the uh, the bushing on the front differential uh, just because removing all this on both sides give me clear, easy access to remove that differential, so why not do it right now? Um, all right, so that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, uh, what is this, a uh, Cletus bolt? All right here, this is a 24 millimeter. It goes right here we're going to remove that one and we're also going to remove this one which i think this one is a 22 i think uh nope a 21 so 21 here and a 24 here so the hardest one is going to be removing this bolt right here uh because they tend to seize up and it's because it's in between a bushing um every time you hammer it the bushing is going to absorb that energy making it harder for that bolt to come out so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this bolt and see if I can break it free, pushing it that way with an air hammer. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the bolt. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take an air hammer. I'm gonna hit this, hopefully the bolt can come off. If it doesn't, I do have replacement bolts uh, for, for, the, for, for this lower one here and also for the upper control arms. So if it doesn't come off, come off, which is the most common thing, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it on both sides with a sawzall, and then I'm just gonna replace the bolt. As I mentioned, I'm gonna replace the lower control arms. The new one comes with new bushings. It's, uh, these uh, bushings up here, here, and also comes with a new ball joint. So I don't care about destroying this bushing. All right, so that's uh, being said, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna put you back on time lapse.
guys update so I managed to get the uh, struts out I went ahead and I cut the bolt now I use a cutter wheel to cut it I got really close to it the cutter wheel does not fit all the way uh, but it gets like three four for the way so I used the cutter wheel on both sides and then I went ahead and went back with a reciprocating saw or sawzall and I went ahead and I finished the job honestly it took me about a whole hour 30 minutes on this side and 30 minutes on this side and I managed to get it out all right so right here this is the old strut right here and this is the uh the mountain brackets as i mentioned i went ahead and cut both sides took about an hour 30 minutes on both sides or 45 minutes to remove it um and then i went ahead and i took a hammer and i banged this part right here so i can break it away or separate it from the strut now i don't recommend hitting this side here because remember this is a piston this is a shock so it is pressurized um, the bottom here you can tap it a little bit but I don't recommend swinging it with a sledgehammer because you could uh, risk the potential of it uh, leaking or spraying you with high pressure fluid so be careful with that so I didn't manage to separate it it's still in good condition I just had to clean it up a little bit um, be really careful with these you don't want to bend it or break them um, just because these are about $100 a piece online and they're used uh, so just keep that in mind all right, and I went ahead and started doing this side. Both sides are exactly the same, so you're not really missing much here. The only difference is I had to remove the coolant reservoir to access the bolts. Uh, for this one, it looks like I can just pry on this. I can pry on this. Uh, the only bolt, I think, is this one right here, which is like a 10 millimeter, and you need like a deep socket to remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. When you start doing this job, don't loosen the bolts all the way on the top. You kind of want the top to be secure like that. So leave the top bolts for last. Sorry that I mentioned that on the first uh, the first side. Uh, leave the bolts on top. It makes it easier for you to pry out the bolt for the um, shock mount. And also, um, it lets you cut the uh, bolt here with this being stabilized. So I recommend leave the top bolts for last. Uh, sorry that I mentioned that on the first uh, the first half of the video. Uh, leave those bolts on for last all right guys after a few minutes of jiggling it I, I was able to remove the strut completely out um as i mentioned the only reason why i don't separate the mount from the strut is just because it's, it's extremely seized up in there um in a perfect world down the south you should be able to remove just the strut out and leave that mountain bracket onto the lower control arm but in my case it's extremely these up so there's no way to remove the two on the vehicle so, all right so we're gonna go ahead and separate these two pieces just keep in mind that this thing right here is, is under a lot of pressure you want to make sure that you keep these two ends away from your face and we're just gonna go ahead and just hit this side right here until it comes off Just like that. All right guys, so I managed to remove the bolt from this side. The nut is definitely not welded to the body, so you definitely need to hold it with a wrench or a socket. Now you could access it from this corner here if you move this splash shield to the side. Just keep in mind that there's a wire there that you need to make sure that you're not, you know, stabbing it with a wrench. This side should be easier. There's nothing in the way from that nut. So you could definitely use a 18 millimeter. So it will be a 15 millimeter for the, the bolt and a 18 millimeter for the nut. Uh, you definitely can get that side. Uh, both sides are exactly the same, so you just pay attention to that and you should be good. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna remove this one and then I'm gonna hop over to the driver's side and do the exact same thing on that side as well. All right guys, so, so it looks like the upper control arm on the driver's side is more difficult to get to. Uh, the bolt and the nut, and now you can access it from this splash shield gap right here. You can see it right there, but the only issue is that it's completely uh, rusted, so you need like a, a good amount of grip to keep that wrench in place. As for this side, you must remove the splash shield a little bit. It makes it way easier to access it, and it's right there. Um, I just want to give that tip. All right, so I'm just going to continue to pry it out, and then we should be good to remove the upper control arm on this side. All right, so I got that bolt out. This side was pretty simple. You get a uh, socket and ratchet on this side. 
a breaker bar on this side let it rest on the uh, control arm and you should be able to get that one out as for this one it's a little tricky but i managed to get a 3 8 uh, drive ratchet and socket in there and then i'm using this long ratchet for leverage and it's coming out easy so i'm just going to continue and it should be done in a couple of seconds all right guys just to recap on the items i removed i removed the strut I removed the upper control arm. I removed the sway bar end links. I removed um, the whole knuckle assembly. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove the lower control arm. Lower control arm is pretty simple. There's only three bolts. You have a 21 millimeter long bolt that goes from here all the way down here. You might need to, um, actually, well, no, you don't need a uh, ratchet or a, or a wrench. It looks like there's a flag nut here, so decide it'll set. So the 21 millimeter here. Then on this side, you're gonna have two bolts. You're gonna have a 18 millimeter bolt here, and another 18 millimeter, and another 18 millimeter bolt here. And then this whole lower control arm is just gonna drop. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I have the axle resting on this uh, jack stand, uh, just because the moment this lower control arm drops. This uh, ac this CV axle is going to be dangling, so I want to make sure it's supported and it's not going to get ruined. The boots is not going to st uh, strip open or anything like that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just remove this lower control arm. On the other side is the exact same thing. You have a 21 millimeter here and two 18 millimeter bolts there. Alright guys, so I finally got the lower control arm out. The bolt that goes right here honestly was extremely hard. I almost needed to uh, cut the bolt out in order to get it out. Um, let's take a look over here. This is the lower control arm. So the bolt that goes here which connects the, um, the strut mount to the lower control arm and also the bolt here that connects the lower control arm to the body. These two is going to be the hardest bolts to remove. Um, honestly, do not tackle this job unless you have a breaker bar, a cheetah bar, and then a cheetah bar for the cheetah bar. Um, honestly, these two are the hardest bolts to remove out of this whole project. Um, but I got it out on both sides. It took me a good 30 minutes uh, of prying and hitting it with a hammer and lubric lubricating it and also heating up the nut. Um, so take your time with that um honestly that's not a friendly uh job you can do in your garage uh but it is manageable if you have enough of like enough leverage so now i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop down the front differential for this one we're gonna crawl underneath the vehicle and let me show you what bolts you need to remove all right guys so the bolts we need to remove we need to remove these two bolts that connects this bushing to the subframe then we need to remove this bolt here that connects uh, the, the uh, passenger side um, differential to the body. We have to remove that one. And then last, it's going to be the difficult one. We need to remove that one right there, uh, which connects to the driver's side. So there's three bolts you have to remove. Well, four bolts you have to remove, and then this thing can drop down. Um, I got the jack on the pumpkin here since this is the most heaviest. It should, be, it should be able to uh, hold all the weight as I drop it down. We also need to remove the dry shaft, which I think is just a bunch of 8 millimeter uh, bolts. I think it's about like, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 bolts. And then you can just push that to the side, and we should be good. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and start tackling this and we can lower it down and then I'm gonna show you guys how to press out the old bushings and, and insert the new ones. All right guys, so I managed to remove the bolts for the front dry shaft and I went ahead and I hit the yoke with a soft hammer and I was able to break it free. So you take a look at it, it's separated now. Um, you don't have to remove this side. I For a second I thought I did just because I saw that it didn't have like enough room or like the um, the drive shaft doesn't like collapse on itself that much. So I thought I needed to remove the uh, the back bolts, but you honestly didn't need to do that. You just take a hammer, whack it, and it gives you just enough space for you to separate it so that you could drop the front differential. So that side is all set. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove the, the three bolts I mentioned. Um, it's kind of hard to film it just because it's up there, but you have one right there, one down there, and two up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it and I'll let you know how that goes. All right guys, so I finally got the whole front differential out. Honestly, it was pretty simple. Uh, you got a 15 millimeter and an 18 millimeter, 15 millimeter and an 18 millimeter, and for some reason, 60 millimeters for these guys. But honestly, it was easy. I did it with just one jack, uh, one jack. If you have like a buddy and stuff, it will make it way easier, uh, but I didn't manage. I made sure that the CV axle didn't, didn't took too much stress, just dangling. I used the uh, jack stands for that, and I got it down. It wasn't that bad. Now, this is the reason why we're changing it out. If you take a look at it, this is the common common bushing that goes out on these guys this happens on the jeep commander the uh jeep grand cherokee and uh the jeep liberty i think as well um this right here always happens you need to replace it if not uh the the front differential is going to continue banging forward and eventually it's going to ruin your cv axles and it can also ruin your drive shaft so you want to make sure you replace this this one almost never goes bad. If you take a look at it, the rubber and everything still looks good. I don't see, I see a little stress cracking, but not that bad, but I'm still gonna replace it uh, just because I already got this whole system down. So I'm just gonna replace both. Now, uh, all right guys, this is the uh, setup I have. I have a large cup here to catch the uh, bushing. And then I have this small cap here that is uh, about like half a millimeter smaller than the bushing itself. So it's gonna push the bushing out. Hopefully this works. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on that side. Now keep in mind, the bushing is gonna be put, you wanna make sure that the bushing is being pushed out this way. And then when installing the bushing, you wanna make sure it goes this way. So just keep it, just keep an eye on this yoke. This, this is gonna give you like a good indicator that the bushing will go out this way and the bushing is gonna be received this way. Also, if you take a look over here, if you look closely, you can see that there's the bushing lip is right here. So there's no way for you to press it this way either way. It has to come out this way. Cause this side has a lip, this side doesn't. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this using the impact or using a big breaker bar, hopefully I'm able to press it out in one piece so I don't have to do any weird cutting or any weird melting. All right, stay tuned. All right guys, so I got this bushing out, it's right here. Honestly, it took me about, I'll say 10 minutes to uh, take this out. Um, I needed to basically hit it with the air hammer 
and I basically banged it up multiple times in different spots to kind of like collapse the circle. Um, and then I went ahead and took a a, a uh, sawzall and I basically cut little grooves around once again so I can collapse the circle. And eventually it came it came out perfectly fine. All right, guys. So I managed to pop this one out. Honestly, this one came out way smoother than this one. And I managed to keep the surface nice and clean and, and away from scratches and gouges. Uh, so I should be able to put the new bushing in. All right guys, so I managed to install the two bushings. Um, I almost forgot, we need to replace this bushing here too. This one is just three bolts and uh, three nuts we can remove and we can put in a new one. Uh, honestly, I don't really need to explain this one. Yeah, I think you guys can uh, manage to do this one without me. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that and then we can go ahead and put it back on the jack and then jack it back up and bolt it to the frame. All right guys, so I got the front axle, the front differential back onto the vehicle. Um, honestly, it was pretty simple. It was kind of annoying balancing it by yourself, but it is doable. Um, in case you guys are wondering, uh, this mount over here and this mount over here, you're gonna torque it down to 70 foot-pounds. The two bolts over here for this bushing, torque them down to 35 foot-pounds. Don't over torque them because you will snap these bolts. Um, as for these three right here, the uh, manual said it's 50 foot-pounds, so 50 foot-pounds, 35 foot-pounds, 70 foot-pounds on both sides, and you should be good. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reattach the uh, drive shaft on both sides, and then I'm going to go ahead and start putting all the front suspension back on. Alright guys, so I got the drive shaft bolted on. I went ahead and I torqued it down to 24 foot-pounds. Honestly, you don't really have to torque these down. Just make sure that they're snuggled in. Um, use a quarter inch uh, drive ratchet to do that just so you don't over torque them because you could snap the bolts because these are pretty fragile. Same thing with the ones here, the 24 foot-pounds. Honestly, it doesn't take that much to get to 24 foot-pounds. Use a short, thin uh, ratchet to do it. All right guys, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna complete the installation. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install the upper control arm first, then the strut. I'm gonna let the strut hang from the bolt, the four bolts on top of there, um, which is, for me, I think is gonna be easier because then I can just snake this thing in between the, the uh, strut mount and then I can just put the lower control arm in just like that and everything should be easy. I think doing it that way would be way better then put in the lower control arm first and then put everything on top. So I'm just gonna do that first. I'm gonna put the top upper control arm, then the strut, then the lower control arm, and then finally the steering knuckle. I'm just gonna go ahead and change out this tie rod end real quick, since it's pretty simple and it's right there. Um, in order to change this out, you wanna make sure that you, uh, when you install the new one, you just wanna make sure that it's the same length as the old one they took out. Um, there, 
identical. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this one. I like counting how many turns it takes to remove this. So when I install the new one, I'll have the equivalent length. So when I drive it to the alignment shop, it doesn't eat up my tire so much. All right, so I'm just gonna remove it. We're gonna count all uh, rotations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 22, 23, 24, 25, 24 and a half. So I'm, uh, before I install the new one, I'm just gonna apply a little anti-seize on the thread so that it stays lubricated and it never seize up. All right, our threads are nice and good. I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one. Remember, it's uh, 24 and a half turns. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw it on. Make sure we don't cross. I'm gonna go ahead and screw it on. Just make sure you don't cross thread it. There we go. All right. So right here, 24. So now we're really close to the alignment. You still need alignment, but this this uh, honestly gets you very close to it so you don't wear off your tire and it's somewhat safe to drive on the roads. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and, and install the strut. The upper control arm is already installed. So, it's good. so uh, the way I'm doing it, you can do it any way, any order you feel like is more easy for you. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and install the strut first with the um, strut mount. Then I'm gonna install the lower control arm and basically sandwich this uh, CV axle in between it. Right, guys and I am done installing all the new components um, everything right now is still loose because we still need to torque down everything and you definitely want the weight of the vehicle to be resting on the upper and lower control arms and all the bushings before you uh, tighten the bolts and the fasteners so at this point you can either put the tire back on lower the vehicle and kind of like make your way around it so you can torque down everything or you can use a jack and jack up the vehicle and make sure that the suspension is resting on the way of the vehicle. Um, all right guys, I'm gonna go over the torque specs for everything. I'm gonna work my way from the top to the bottom. All right guys, for the four nuts for the uh, strut, that's gonna be torqued down to 70 foot pounds. Make sure you do a crisscross pattern so that the strut is resting evenly on the strut uh, tower. So it's, that's gonna be 70 foot pounds. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the upper control arm. Now the uh, upper control arm, the two bolts, the two pivot bolts, you're gonna torque that down to 70 foot pounds each. So 70 here, 70 here. Now as for the ball joint, be careful, don't over torque that because you can snap it or you can ruin the threads on the nut. You wanna torque that down to 70 foot pounds. All right, now we're gonna move down to this bolt here, the one that connects this uh, mount to the bottom of the strut. This bolt right here, you're gonna to torque this down to 90 foot pounds. Then we're gonna move over to this bolt down here. This bolt is gonna go through the lower control arm. So once again, you wanna make sure that the weight of the vehicle is resting on the suspension. You're gonna to torque that bolt down to 125 foot pounds. So 125 here, 90 foot pounds here. Just remember that, be careful with that. Then we're gonna go over to the lower control arm. Now the lower control arm, this bolt right here, this big one in the front of the vehicle, this one's gonna be same thing, 125 foot pounds. Then you got two bolts here. These two bolts, you wanna be really careful. You wanna torque those down to 60 foot pounds, only 60. Do not torque them down to 125. You will snap those bolts. All right, now the outer tie rod, there's only one nut. You're gonna to torque that down to 70 foot pounds. All right, and also the lower ball joint, Torque that down to 70 foot pounds as well. Once again, be careful with the ball joints. You can snap them if you over torque them. 
and and uh, you can also ruin the threads if you over torque them so 70 foot pounds for the lower ball joint and the upper ball joint all right guys and that's basically it that's all the uh, torque specs for all the bolts and fasteners all right once again you want to make sure that suspension is carrying the load of the vehicle before you start torquing things down that's to prevent any premature uh, wear on the bushing all right guys and that's basically it on how to install all these components now you definitely want to get your car aligned when you go to the alignment shop make sure they adjust the camber by moving the lower control arm they, they need to loosen the three bolts and they need to shift the lower control arm in order to adjust for camber i'm going to pause the video here for a quick moment so i can point something out when i was reading the repair manual i noticed that there were different torque specs uh, for each year uh, so i recommend look through your own repair manual or reach out to an expert and figure out what is the correct torque specs for your specific year make and model but once again it looks like it changes over the years so you want to make sure that you're not torquing them too too much or leaving the fastener too too loose so definitely uh, do your own research when it comes to this part. All right guys, and that's basically it, how to replace the whole front suspension. Now, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. It does help out. Um, all right guys, um, I have a few more repair videos I'm gonna do. Um, I'm thinking of replacing the water pump one of these days. And I'm also thinking of replacing the power steering pump. So I'm definitely going to make a video on that just to help you guys out. Whoever, you know, are looking for more how-to videos on how to work on these Commanders and these uh, Jeep Grand Cherokees, the uh, WK and the XK. All right, guys. That being said, I'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.